Hi all, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about uh, surviving night shift as a doctor in Australia, the tips and strategies. Working as a night doctor in Australia can be quite challenging and can be a bit daunting. So in this video, I will offer tips and strategies that you can use to stay alert, to stay focused and uh, to stay, you know, be successful in a night shift. I'll be sharing my own perspective, what I have found helpful, and I am sure, I'm very sure that this is going to be an important topic. So listen in and let's talk about it. My name is Anna. Thank you so much for being here. So my first uh, tip and uh, strategy to ensure that um, you have a successful night shift is you have to prepare. It is said that preparation is the key to successful um, uh, Whatever it is that you do, preparation, if you prepare well, you're likely to be more successful. So first thing before you start your shift, you need to prepare adequately, ensure that you're well hydrated, ensure that you are well rested, ensure that you've had a good meal and try and avoid the very, very heavy meals. You know, those ones that do have, you know, uh, that make you feel bloated, make you feel you completely full. You don't want that um, being the case. Ensure that you really, really well prepared for your night shift. The other thing that you need to consider when you're preparing for your night shift is ensure comfort. Remember, you may be on your feet for a couple of hours. You may be on your feet for eight hours, nine hours, and sometimes I work 13 hour night shift. So you can see that that's quite an extensive period of time. You want to ensure that you're comfortable, you have comfortable shoes, you want to ensure that you, you, you probably are in scrubs because you'll be carrying various things in your pockets, you may have like um, uh, like an energy bar, you may be having you know your pens, you may have a couple of things in your pockets, you may be having you know your car keys and all that. So it's very important to ensure that you are wearing something that's comfortable, something that's well airy, something that's not tight. And the best would be like to wear comfortable fitting scrubs, comfortable fitting shoes. The other thing that is part of your preparation is prepare your gadgets, prepare your equipment, prepare what you're likely to use over the night shift. Ensure you carry along your stethoscope that will come in completely handy. It is almost impossible to, to, to work and review patients without having a proper functioning stethoscope. And sure, sometimes the other thing that I normally carry is a pen light. Obviously have a couple of pens because if you're like me, you lose a couple along the way and probably gain some along the way <laughs> by taking from your colleagues and stuff like that without even realizing it. So preparation is completely, completely key to ensure that you have a successful night shift. That is before you come into work. What about during the shift? What are some of the strategies that I, that I have used to ensure that I have a successful night shift? And I think this is where the meat of the matter is. As a doctor in Australia, you have to come prepared for your shift. Remember, night shifts can be long, they can be tiring, they can be extremely sick patients. You do have support, but usually the amount of support at night is actually on the lower side. And because of that, you sort of need to prepare your yourself mentally but also physically to ensure that you know you're able to go through your tasks and stuff like that during the shift my tip number one is to ensure that you can manage your tasks okay ensure that you prioritize and you focus on the critical roles remember when you're asked to see a patient you in your mind or as as, as you get a handover from the nurses or as you get a page from the nurses I realize what is urgent that needs to be done immediately. And those are things that will either come on your rapid response pager or things that will come, you know, that the nurses may tag along or even call in to say that this is urgent that needs urgent attention or pre-met or something like that. Very important to realize what is most critical that needs attention right away and what can wait. OK, and I think I've offered some of these tips in my other video that I did recently. And part of what I did mention in that video was when you are given a couple of tasks, let's say you be given by a nurse that there's a patient that has a chest pain and then there's a patient that has um, that is delirious or there's a patient that needs um, uh, an algesia script or there's a patient that uh, just needs some reassurance in your mind. As an after hours doctor or a night doctor, you need to prioritize what is coming, what needs to be done immediately, what needs to be done ASAP, because 
the patient with chest pain needs to be reviewed within a couple of minutes. You need to be there. You need to look at the ECG. You need to assess, ensure that this patient is not having a cardiac event, ensure that this patient does not require urgent intervention or does require urgent intervention. And then obviously part of the task management will be prioritizing and sometimes even delegating some things like saying, look, nurse number one, are you kindly able to put in a cannula for me as even as I come along? Would you be, would you like me to give you a phone order as I review this other patient? And as soon as I finish, I will come towards you, your end and stuff like that. So it's very, very critical to know what needs urgent attention and what can wait. And whatever it is that can wait, put it in your mind so that you do not forget that you need to do it and eventually find a way to get around to do it. Number two is communication. When you are on a night shift, it is very, very essential to know how to communicate. I have told you guys over and over again, you cannot do without communication as a doctor anywhere, not only in Australia. You cannot survive without being a good communicator. And by this, I essentially mean, remember, you'll be communicating with the nurses, you'll be communicating with your senior and your junior colleagues, you'll be talking to patients, you'll be talking to their families and stuff like that. And remember, in a night shift, because of the nature of the job, you'll be like, shoo, 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 really quick and, you know, managing your time appropriately and stuff like that. So, it's very important to know what needs to be said, in what way it needs to be said. And, and that I will cover it when I'm talking about my next point, which is essentially developer structure. Okay. So my next point is essentially developer structure whenever you see a patient. And I have found it in my routine day to day, like if I'm paged, like, oh, there's a patient that the blood pressure is low. As I walk towards the ward and I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking and ticking off boxes in my head. Could this patient be hypovolemic? Could this patient be septic? Could this patient be having, you know, uh, a pulmonary event or a cardiac event? So you're thinking in your head so that by the time you get to the bedside of the patient, you're already thinking about your differentials and what you're likely to do for that patient. And as soon as you get on the ward, you go through the patient's notes, you will so that to you no know, first you'll probably get a handover from the nurse so that you familiarize yourself with the patient and then after you familiarize with pa yourself with the patient from what the nurse has told you have a quick look through the patient's notes quick look through the bloods quick look through the x-rays get to the patient's side and obviously that will again depend on the urgency of the matter sometimes you have to do things in a flip in a different way so you get to the patient's bedside do your a b c d quickly and then obviously if there's no imminent danger then you can come back and sort of you know gather your information that is important for assessment of this patient so like i said structure is essentially very very key i'll tell you what my structure is you know everybody develops their own structure whatever way for me i like to use you know something like an isoba sort of you know thing in my head so i'll be looking at all oh, subject this patient is a 78 year old they've come in they live alone at home or they live with wife they're coming in with one two three four i've been asked to review because of one two three and i will do my assessment and will have a differential in my mind and then i will decide am i speaking to the boss or not Am I doing some more investigations or not? And then I will come up with my assessment and my plan. So structure is key, 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 because you will use the same structure when you're talking to your colleagues. You will use the same structure when you are, um, when you're um, handing over, you'll use the same structure when you're reviewing patient. So have one way, figure out whatever works best for you and go with that structure. Okay. Number four, understand your tasks. Whenever you go on any shift, whether it's locum shift, whether it's a regular shift, whether it's an after hours shift, understand what is expected of you in that shift. Are you supposed to do reviews? Are you supposed to do admissions? Are you supposed to uh, write medical charts? Are you supposed to um, uh, communicate which bosses would like to be told about everything and anything? Which ones are okay for you to manage on your own? So it's very, very important to understand and uh, know what is expected of you. You also need to know when you need to seek help. 
you know my mantra when i go into work you guys know by now if you followed me for a while you know i'm quite a believer when i go into work i go like god give me the serenity to know what i can handle and what i cannot handle give me the wisdom to know so then i can ask for help so essentially for me it's knowing when i need to ask for help when i need to escalate the care of the patient when i need to speak to ic when i need to speak to a senior colleague and stuff like that so it's very very important to know what is expected of you and then you just run along with with that number five very important during night shift to do your time management i cannot reinforce this enough Remember, sometimes on after hours, it's either just, you know, one junior or two juniors for an entire hospital and stuff like that. And so things can come in so like so quick, quick, quick. And without proper time management, my principle is essentially every review, I should be able to go through a review within 20, 20 to 30 minutes. I should have finished that review. You know, I should have a plan by the end of that time and stuff like that. And again, part of managing your time is you need to put in, remember that part of your time is spent on patients, but also part of the time you need to spend it on yourself as well. Get a bit of a rest, get a bit of a break and stuff like that. So time management, I cannot reinforce it enough. And again, I have covered this extensively in another video. If you can look out for those videos, they will be helpful to you as a doctor in Australia. Uh, the other, the, I think it's probably point number six is stay alert, you know, remember you are on a night shift, you're not in your house where you're going to go into a deep sleep or something like that. Stay alert, ensure that your pages volume is good enough for you to be able to hear, ensure that your phone is not on silent, that if you're called, you can be able to hear your phone call and also ensure that you take regular breaks. Okay. Remember some of the hospitals will have like uh, a place you can make yourself coffee or hot chocolate or something like that. They may be able, you know, to fix yourself a meal, like let's say a toasty. You may be able to warm your food if you carried food and stuff like that. Take breaks to do, you know, your toilet breaks. Take, and I'm saying this because I know sometimes people forget to take toilet breaks. It's very, very important. Listen to me. You have to take your toilet breaks. You have to take your tea breaks if you need to take your tea breaks. And if it's a bit quiet, it's okay to lie down and rest. OK, just do not go into deep sleep and miss a med call or miss an important review or something like that. So those are some of the things that I must say are very, very essential. And I have found very, very helpful to know and think in my mind when I'm going on an after hours shift and when I'm going night shift to try and ensure that I am, you know, uh, productive, that I'm efficient, that I'm doing what is expected of me. If I stop this video here, I would be unfair to you. So I will talk about, you know, part of the, the extra mile that you need to go as a night doctor or an after hours doctor is to ensure that you get, you do the post night, you know, um, strategies. So after your night shift, remember when you're finishing your hand sh uh, night shift, you need to do your clinical handover. Those patients that you reviewed overnight that were extremely unwell, that, you know, you ordered bloods, important bloods, like things like tropes and stuff like that, you don't want that being missed and being discovered six hours later. So ensure, using the structure that I told you, ensure that you do a clinical handover to your colleagues, clinical handover to the bosses, you know, ensure that somebody is going to look after your sick patients when you leave. If you tried cannulas and you were not successful, hand over those things. Remember Remember to hand over your pages. Don't go home with them in your pocket. Hand over the important pages, the rapid response pages, you know, the met pages. Um, remember to hand over the, 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 your regular, you know, leave at work, your regular um, pager because you don't know, you know, you may just go home and get unwell or something like that. And you don't want to inconvenience people to look around for pages that you've taken home. Okay. Remember the important thing after night shift is develop your own structure of debriefing. Remember, you are a doctor, but you're a human being. You will have difficult night shifts. You will lose patience on some night shifts. You will feel like you miss something really, really important on a night shift. And as a doctor, I find that you naturally will beat yourself down because of that. But find ways to debrief. If you've had a cardiac arrest, there will be formal debriefing mechanisms in the hospital, but have your own mechanism as well. If it is for me, the big thing is mainly my family and probably, you know, um, you know, just being able to talk things out, you know, you could do that with your colleagues, you could do that with your supervisors and your mentors as well, ensure that you debrief. And the other 
wonderful thing about, you know, and trying to do after your night shift is find a way to wind down. Find a way to do your own relaxation. For me, sometimes just start taking that extra five minutes when I get home to stay in the car and just clear my head, you know, just, you know, clear my head, go through things that happened, assess myself, see, did I do right there? Did I, you know, and so that when you're getting into the house, you're sort of, you know, separating, you know, you work and now you're into the house and, you know, getting yourself a shower, freshening up and, you know, obviously trying to get some sleep remember to get some sleep okay uh, you've had a busy night shift you've been on your feet the whole day um the you know nature will lie to you that it's daytime that you probably need to do one two three but remember to get yourself some rest and get yourself some sleep and i cannot finish this video by not saying that you need to have some social connections stay sane in this job you need to stay sane by hanging out with friends and family, hanging out with people that matter and people that are going to speak life into you, people that are going to ensure that you fill your cup again. So remember to use some of these strategies when you're planning to do your night shift. And this is very important to the young people that are starting work, the young, you know, um, uh, residents, the new doctors that have just migrated to Australia and they don't know how the system works. Remember to do some of these things and remember to ask for help. Ask for help when you're not sure. And remember to look at the policies, look at the therapeutic guidelines, look at other things that I may not have mentioned in this video to try and ensure that you position yourself really well as an after hours and as a night doctor. If there's something that I've missed out and you as a doctor have found helpful, please remember to comment on there so that this can be helpful to the people that need it. But importantly, so like, share and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you so much for keeping it here. Bye.